Hey everybody. A few weeks ago, I was at Oshkosh Air Venture, a huge air show slash trade show that covers general aviation, experimental aviation, flight simulation. Basically, if it's related to aviation, you're gonna find it at Oshkosh. If you missed that vlog, I'll have a link to it popping up over here. While wandering around the vendor booths, I noticed that Thrustmaster was there. Now I am a huge fan of their Warthog HOTAS system as well as the T-16000 stick and throttle. And so I was very excited to see that they had their new Pendula rudder pedals available to play around with. I spent a little bit of time with them at the show and that only made me more excited to pick a set up. Then I happened to run into Tim, Thrustmaster's North American market manager, and he was awesome enough to have Thrustmaster send me a set of the TPR pedals to play around with. So I'd like to give a huge thank you to Tim and to Thrustmaster. This video will be my initial impressions of the TPR pedals. After I've had a bit more time to play around with them and really get a sense for how they feel, I'll be releasing more videos with updated thoughts, answers to any questions that you guys might leave in the comment section below, a comparison to real rudder pedals found in the Cessna 172 that I fly in my aviation adventure vlogs, and probably a whole lot more. So be sure to subscribe and toggle the little notification bell so that you can keep up on how I feel about these pedals over an extended period of time. So let's get on with it, shall we? The first and probably most notable thing about these pedals is that they are built almost entirely out of metal. In fact, the only part that I can find that isn't metal is a little plastic shroud over the brake sensors. This makes the TPR pedals very sturdy, solid, and heavy. They weigh just over 16 pounds, which is about 7.3 kilograms. The rudder systems that I've used prior to these, with the exception of the MFG Crosswind pedals, have been made out of plastic and have felt extremely flimsy. The MFG Crosswind pedals are made out of a CNC composite material, and while they feel very good and seem fairly sturdy overall, some of the attachment points have actually come apart a few times during the six or so years that I've owned them, with the epoxy used to attach the pieces together having failed. This flaw may have been fixed in subsequent revisions of the MFG Crosswinds, as I believe I have the first generation pedals and Milan Flight Gear is currently on their third generation production design. The Thrustmaster TPR is solidly fastened together with nuts and bolts, and seems much less likely to just come apart. It's much easier to just tighten these down quickly and get right back to flying rather than being grounded for a significant amount of time while waiting for epoxy to dry. The pedal motion as well as the braking action is incredibly smooth thanks to the Hall Effect frictionless sensors on all three of the axes. And speaking of the axes, there are several adjustments that can be made to the TPR system to suit your preferences. The stiffness of the rudder pedals can be adjusted by two springs found on the back of the pedestal. Slide them up or down these two tracks, or even remove one or both springs entirely to dial in the resistance exactly how you want. However, do note that the stiffer you make them, the more likely the pedals are to slide across the floor when you're using them. Which brings me to, yes, unfortunately, despite their weight and the really nice rubber feet that are on the bottom, they do slide on my carpeted floor even when both of the tension springs are completely removed and it has zero resistance. While the rubber feet on the bottom do help these stick much more to hard flooring or a hard surface like this countertop, since you're pressing the pedals more or less directly backwards with very little pressure or weight going downwards toward the ground, the pedals still do slide. While this is slightly disappointing, I've never used an aviation rudder peripheral that hasn't slid around when not backed up against some kind of brace or stopper or custom mounted to keep them stationary. The brake levers can be adjusted to suit the pilot's preference. You can angle them between 35 degrees and 75 degrees. I have mine generally set up for a more realistic and slightly more vertical angle than what the slider style pedals offer. Now you can't adjust the stiffness of the braking action itself, but in a real world airplane you don't sit your feet on the brake levers anyways unless you're actively braking. You keep your heels on the floor and move the rudders, and you only lift your feet up to the brakes if you need to use them. That way you're not riding the brakes and burning the pads. So for me, this really isn't an issue. If you're used to slider style plastic pedals, and even the MFG crosswind pedals where your entire foot sits on the pedal at all times, and you simply press your toes down to brake, this might end up feeling a little awkward until you adjust to it. This is, however, much more realistic, and once you do get used to it, it feels much better, actually. The centering action on these pedals is smooth as silk and feels very much like real rudder pedals with no noticeable detent and no stickiness when the pedals reach their centering point. Additionally, since you're pushing the pedals straight back and forth as opposed to sliding them along a track or rotating them, it's very easy to tell when you're at or very near the center position. Many of the cheaper plastic sliding style rudder pedals have a very noticeable centering point with quite a bit of a dead zone. This is super distracting and totally unrealistic. The MFG Crosswinds also have a very smooth and realistic centering action, but I find it hard to tell where my feet are in relation to each other since the MFGs rotate when moved as opposed to going straight back and forth. The TPR pedals come with all of the tools you'll need, 
and a well-written manual that describes and diagrams how to make the various adjustments to the pedals. You can download the latest drivers and firmware from Thrustmaster's website, and if you feel like installing their target programming software, you can, but I've always just set up my joysticks with the in-game control settings pages. The pedals connect to your computer via a USB 2.0 cable that's detachable from both the rudder pedestal as well as the port on the back of your computer. And I find this really convenient since you can just leave the cable plugged into your computer at all times and just quickly detach from the back of the pedals if you need to move them out from under your desk. I tested these pedals out in game to give you a general idea for how I think they feel in both DCS World and X-Plane 11. I started with the TF-51D and the UH-1H Huey in DCS World. These aircraft are a great way to test rudder pedals in particular because there's adverse yaw and torque forces that you have to account for and counter with constant rudder input. Now back when I transitioned from a SciTech Pro Flight rudder system, which is a slider style rudder peripheral, to the MFG Crosswinds, the difference was night and day, and I was not expecting the same sort of feeling transitioning from the crosswinds to the TPRs. But the pendular axis movement is so natural and smooth that I found it easy to put in exactly the amount of rudder input I wanted. Unlike the slider style rudder pedals, there's no sticking and there's no gritty feeling. And the TPR pedals produce gently increasing resistance the further back you depress them. The pendular motion of the TPR also means that unlike the MFG crosswinds, which rotate as you introduce left or right rudder input, the TPR pedals push straight backwards and forwards, resulting in a much more accurate, connected, and realistic feeling. Additionally, since they're more like real world rudders where you keep your heels on the floor unless you're actively braking, it takes much less effort to hold them in a particular position for an extended period of time. Yeah, I know we should be trimming often if we have the luxury of rudder trim in whatever aircraft we're flying, but sometimes an aircraft only has elevator trim. And sometimes, while you're maneuvering, it's just not all that practical to be constantly trimming the rudders. Jumping into X-Plane 11, I had a very similar experience flying the default Cessna 172. Taxiing on the ground felt completely natural to me. It was not a problem to hold the runway center line on takeoff, and in the air, it was very natural and easy to maintain coordinated flight, and smoothly adjust my rudder input based on which phase of flight I was in. Even with the MFG crosswind pedals, it's been difficult for me to taxi straight, and on the takeoff roll, I always seem to be oscillating left and right down the runway center line, complete with plenty of nose wheels squealing, because I find myself either putting in too much or not enough rudder input. I imagine that's down to the rotational motion of the crosswinds, versus the pendular travel of the TPR pedals. And the much higher precision hall effect sensors in the TPR pedals might also have something to do with it. In both DCS World and in X-Plane, I never found myself over-controlling whatever aircraft I was flying. I always had a very accurate sense of how much input I was providing to one direction or the other. Very gentle inputs resulted in pretty much exactly what I was trying to get the aircraft to do. I'm gonna say that my initial impressions of the TPR pedals are extremely positive. If you've been flying without dedicated rudder pedals, for example, if you've been using the twist feature on pretty much every joystick available, or if you have a set of slider style rudder pedals and are looking for a significant upgrade, I would say that without question the TPR pedals are a fantastic choice. They do come with a fairly significant price tag as well, but I feel it's justified by the build quality, the absolute precision offered by the hall sensors, and just the overall feel. I also think that much like the Hotas Warthog, you'll probably be able to find them on sale every so often, so if the price just seems way out of your ballpark, be a little patient and pick them up when you find them for a more reasonable price. When it comes to comparing them to the MFG Crosswind pedals, things get a little trickier. The MFG Crosswinds are a fantastic piece of hardware, and unless you have a spare chunk of change sitting around able to be spent on these, I'm really not sure whether the upgrade can be justified. I also have no idea how the newer third generation MFGs feel compared to the first generations that I own. The TPR pedals are much more realistic, and the increased precision provided by the hall sensors is noticeable. So if those are big considerations for your simulator setup, these may well be something to look at picking up. Likewise, if your MFGs have fallen apart a few times like mine have, or if they're starting to feel a little wobbly and you're just looking to replace them in the future, then I definitely recommend considering the TPR pedals. In the end, it's gonna be up to you to decide whether you're interested in taking the plunge. This video is meant to provide more information about these pedals than has been available up to this point and give you my feelings about them as both a real world pilot and a flight simulation enthusiast. Are these pedals expensive? Yeah. Are they worth the price? In my opinion, if you can afford them or comfortably save up and get a set, then yeah. As I said earlier, I'll be putting together more videos about these guys, comparing them to the real world rudder pedals, seeing if my opinions change after more extended use, and answering any notable questions that may be asked by you guys either in the comments below or over on Twitch when I'm streaming. The link to that is in the description. If you found this video helpful or informative, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for more flight simulation and general aviation content. And toggle the little bell next to the subscription button if you want to be notified when I release new content. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the next video.